This is a project I've been working on. Uh, what I'm doing is installing a digital readout display on the Z axis of this RF31 uh, mill drill machine. I took the, uh, the lead screw uh, assembly out of there that used to be there with the knob down here to adjust the, the pointer for um, giving you a you know, visual indication of the depth of the um, Z axis. I replaced the lead screw with this half inch rod. Uh, I used the same nut and uh, bushing from the uh, lead screw assembly, turned the end of the rod down to 3 8 and uh, tapped the end for a, a 3 8 16 thread and put a nut on the end of that. So it tightened the uh, rod in the bushing um, against the shoulder I turned uh, with this nut. So now it's nice and sturdy in there. I had to mess around a little bit with shimming this to get the rod straight, otherwise it um, won't line up with the uh, digital readout uh, encoder slide. Um, this is what I'm going to install now. This is a part that I made out of just some scrap material I had laying around. Uh, it's basically two pieces of angle iron um, here and there. Um, they go on each side of the machine to mount on these four screws that were pre-existing for the cover that used to be there. And uh, this is just a three and a half inch square um, piece of galvanized steel that was meant for uh, um, attaching a decking stud. You know, something like an electrical box would work there too. And this just happened to be a scrap piece of metal that I had that I added on top of that. And that's going to hold the uh, displays. And I'll show you that in a second, how they just magnetically stick on here. The plan is to put all three axes on this machine. It'll be an X, Y, and Z display here. Um, right where I can see them, but uh, this whole piece has been assembled and fabricated to, to fit on here and it should just slide on. I'm lucky. Yeah. The axis feature on this is probably the most difficult digital readout to install because you need to do that rod setup in there, which is a little, a little more challenging. And uh, this really isn't a, a difficult piece to fabricate. You know, just go to the hardware store and get a couple pieces of angle iron and uh, some, uh, this is uh, eighth inch uh, plate stock that just screwed on to it to give us some strength and uh, rigidity and I've got some cover plates here that I'll put on in a minute after we're done tightening down this guy here. Okay, so this little screw's tight and everything's locked down pretty good. You now this is pretty solid so it's not going to vibrate. This knob on the going back on here. I want to be able to get at this knob. That's why everything's spaced around here. Um, I want me to do that. Still see the readouts. Still work the manual uh, control here. Um, but also I can use the knob and control up and down. The, uh, this is the encoder assembly here. And then we'll attach this rod. And uh, once I've got everything lined up, I'll take this top screw up here. Up here. Fixed pitch. And uh, let me get the digital readout. So the digital readout's all will go over here on this panel. Right? So I've got uh, enough space there for three of them. They're all the same type of unit. They're nice with just a magnetic. Uh, Attachments. So I'm just going to go with that and keep things simple. But uh, this uh, 
this cable. I'll have to I'm still work on the routing and attachment of all the cables and strain relief. Just plug in back here. I see on this rod, I put it in the milling machine and milled flat on it before I drilled and tapped this screw hole in it. So the uh, arm that came with the uh, greed out fits back in properly. So what you have to do is run this up and down, check it for binding, motion. You can see the top of it's moved around. It's properly lined up. It actually looks perfect as the way it is. So I'm going to tighten this up down. That was mainly the problem I had yesterday. But this was getting that to move up and down without wanting to pull this slide assembly back and forth. It was because this rod wasn't straight. That's why I'm shimming it down here. That seemed to be the easiest way to get it to come out right. There we go. It's that. And uh, I just made up this cover plate. Down over here. This will help keep some of the machine filings and shavings out of the out of the head of the machine. Just get a nice, nicer, cleaner look. It's pretty, pretty simple. Like I said, this is all just cheap eighth-inch plate. Cut, cut the die grinder, the abrasive blade. And some quick sanding on with a disc sander and drill holes, tap holes as needed. So that's the assembly there. I have to turn this on. Zero it. This is appearing just fine. All three of the uh, displays on, so you can see it. That's what it looked like when the other encoders are on. I have to work on installing those now, but there'll be three displays just like that. There's a close-up view. Close-up view showing the, the uh, XYZ display setup. Here you can see where I mounted the uh, Z axis uh, encoder slide. In hindsight, I think if I did this over again, I probably would have mounted that encoder slide on, on the inside of a, a box uh, just to hide it away. 
Um, I was worried about doing that because of the knob. I wanted to have clearance around this turn knob for my fingers. I guess I could have stepped this out around the uh, around that encoder slide. But uh, yep, if you finish something, you always see a better way to do it. Um, the reason I started with this approach of putting it on the outside was I saw a lot of other ones on on, uh, on the internet that were done this way, but those had readouts directly on the encoder slide, so you'd want to be able to see it. And you'd, you'd want to mount it in that location. But with the remote uh, displays with this unit, um, it could have been uh, hidden away for, uh, for better looking for some protection. In our view of that uh, long y-axis slider. Here you can see how I mounted the y-axis um, encoder slide. There's a, a wedge piece that's inserted here into the uh, track for the uh, stop uh, the stops that are used on the, uh, the wax I think you can see one of the stop parts is still there behind it and um, those are normally moved to set stop points on the y-axis so that track runs the whole length of the, the table and just made a, um, a wedge shaped piece that fit in that track it has like about a 20 degree um, angle on it <clears throat> That wedge piece has about a 20 degree angle on it, and um, I just matched it up. And uh, then there's a bolt that runs through. This is just a s standard spacer, and then a block that I machined. Um, two mounting screws. You can see a copper shim uh, that I put in there that's 20,000 thick that I used to just get um, everything to um, come out to the right height so I could attach the uh, encoder slide uh, to the uh, uh, the table underneath and then on top you can see the uh, cover that I made out of two L-shaped pieces of uh, um, aluminum channel screw on top and just some washers underneath to space it up the right height and that just gives some protection in case something falls uh, off the table onto that uh, long slide it's 24 inches long so you know it needs some protection in case something falls on it And here you can see the here you can see the slide that's underneath for the uh, X axis. That's just mounted on the side of the machine. And then uh, a bracket coming down off the table that is just made out of a piece of um, one half inch uh, steel L channel. Just bolted to the side of the table. Very simple. It sits on the side of the base at a slight angle um, because that side of the base is kind of slanted in about five degrees. Uh, that doesn't affect the function um, picking up the uh, uh, measurements in the x axis. So it doesn't really matter what angle that's at as long as it's perpendicular to the table and uh, follows the direction of motion on the x axis. And this is something I just came up right quick and very just for getting a power feed on the Y axis. Basically just made a, a bushing here uh, press fitted into the uh, end of the handle and engages that about a quarter inch. So I just slid the handle out a little bit on the, on the shaft back here so it's still engaged and locked down and uh, then just uh, drilled a hole in the uh, end of this aluminum piece and, and shoved in a a driver I already had from a, a set for my uh, cordless drill. And then uh, this way I can just plug this on quickly when I want to move the carriage fast in the y axis. It seems to, seems to work. It's working.